Okay. Hey, welcome to my data moshing tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over iframe data moshing. I'm going to be going over the science behind video compression. Just to note, there is such thing known as P frame data moshing as well as iframe data moshing. Um, but today we're just going to be covering iframe data moshing. I will cover P frame in a later video. To begin with, we need to understand how modern day video compression works. Pause! Data moshing is corrupting a video for artistic effect. Like this introduction has been, it is only useful to help convey an artistic choice. Video files require compression for effective distribution. To do this, we have two different types of frames. We have iframes and P frames. Iframes are the frames with most data. Since they contain the data for every single pixel on screen, they are typically at the start of every clip or when the compressor detects that every single pixel in a clip has changed. P-frames where we get a little more complex, so I'll keep it simple. The blue area represents where the pixels carry the same data over to the next frame. The red areas, which have movement and changes, have new data for the pixels in each frame. They keep the same data to save space and make playback and distribution easier. On the left we have a regular clip, and on the right we have the clip again, but with iframe data moshing applied to it. As you can see in the iframe data mosh, only the pixels that have new colour data in new frames are the ones that break through. To begin data moshing, select two clips, place them in a timeline and export them as a regular file format. You can use any editor of your choice but by doing this and exporting in a H.264 file, we're creating a clip that has an iframe in the middle of it between the cut of the two clips, since the color data changes completely between the two frames. Next, we need to bring our footage into a Vidimux 2.5. Just clear the screen for you. Um, this will allow us to data mosh our clip. When you import your footage into a Vidimux, you'll be greeted with these two messages. Just hit no to both. First, we need to go to the video tab in the top left and convert the file into an MPEG-4 ASP in brackets XVID. This will allow us to have as many iframes as we want and corrupt the footage. Next, we need to go to configure, where we will then move across to the frame tab and change the maximum iframe interval to all nines. Once we've done this step, we only need to save the video and I'm just going to save it as test clip 2. Now we need to simply close this project and then reopen the project with test clip 2. In the next step, we'll need to use the up and down arrow keys on our keyboard to move between the iframes of the video. You can see in the bottom of the editor that it says what frame type you're currently hovering over. Once you get to the iframe in the middle of your clip, hit the A button, then move one arrow key to the right, hit the B button and then hit delete. This will remove the iframe from the video. All we need to do now is convert the video back to a copy rather than an MPEG-4 and then re-save the video under another title. I'm going to save my video under the name Test Clip 3. The final step is to convert our video back to an MP4 or a .mov so then we can edit it in our regular video editors again. I use this simple online converter. Once you've converted the file you should end up with a clip looking like this. That's all we've got time for today. Thank you for watching my tutorial video and I'll see you in the next video.